Okay, we'll call the Fleckman's meeting door at six thirty. Oh, we aren't taping yet. Should I get? Oh, I guess we were already. Hold on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Call the meeting to order at six thirty. Fleckman's meeting. All three Fleckman are here, and a group of people in the audience. Uh, first order of business: approve the meeting minutes of ten twenty six twenty three. Make a motion. We approve the minutes of 10 26 23 is presented. Second. Any discussion? Questions? No, all in favor say aye. Aye. So moved. Number three is public comment. Uh, seems we have a large group here tonight. I'd like to limit the discussion to two minutes per person. And then when you wish to speak, please identify yourself. And where you're from. I'll second that motion. I don't think we need a motion. I just, well, I okay, can't if you want. Legal. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Okay, public comment. Anybody wish to speak? Okay, okay, go ahead. Matt Norton, 21 Church Street. Um, what it is? Matt Norton. I I just kind of want to start talking about the ice box and the whole debacle that there is. Um, it seems publicly, as a realtor, I've been you know looking around and talking to people, and it's the optics are Brooklyn hates small business. That's that's basically what I'm getting from everybody. That we have Putnam, Plainfield. And an assortment of other towns that welcome small business. And our town, Brooklyn, is uh, a fire company can crush a small business with the help of the town. Uh, I just, I, I would really like to hear your reaction and how you plan to fix that, uh, especially if the ice box goes out of business. And if we have to pay out a large sum of money to Brooklyn Sandy Gravel. Okay, thank you. You have no answer for that? I don't see how to relate it, but this is public comment. It's not open for debate. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, in the back. Do you mind if I stand? I can't that's, see anybody. That's, that's fine. That's better. <laughs> Here too. Oh, All right, boy. so my name is Gallagher Blevins, 58 Juniper Way, Brooklyn. And I am here for the Icebox Pseudo. I mean, these are these are local businesses that are providing good for not only our economy, but they support uh you know our local uh you know scouting they support the you know the sports that we do around here in town it is it is baffling to me how this has gone on for so long and that there isn't a resolution and i've heard very few people say well you know what what are we we're just gonna cut a check when you screw up and you bring people to court and you make them get lawyers to defend themselves you have to pay i'm not I'm not saying that you unload the checking checkbook, but you have to make them at least equal for everything that they've been put through. 
And that is a statement to any elected official that if you screw up like this, you're going to lose your election. You're going to lose your seat, your seating here. And, you know, that's how, that's how you become accountable. You know, these, this, it's just so sad to see what has happened, excuse me, what has happened to this, this family and this local business. I mean, so countless people, have, that's where they go for their first jobs. That's where we go after games. That's where we take friends out of town. I mean, this is just mind blowing that this is not resolved yet. And I hope, I hope this gets resolved soon because I mean, you know, Matt, Matt and Jen and their, their kids, they're, they're part of this community and what had happened to them, they didn't ask for. And, you know, they're doing what any one of us would do. They're fighting for their livelihood. And if, if you wouldn't, if you guys wouldn't do that, if you wouldn't fight for your livelihood, then you shouldn't be in that role because we want people to fight for us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Linda Trayon, 26 Manor Road. Uh, I think one of the issues here when um, the gentleman spoke about uh, Brooklyn not being business friendly, I think in, in this town, what we have is there's certain friendliness toward certain businesses. And it depends which business or which business owner you are um, that you get the um, certain perks or uh, uh, decisions that go your way. And these four people are just trying to run a family owned business that's been wonderful for this town. And if we end up having to lose them because of all that they've been through, it would be a real shame. Um, so maybe we need to look at how we um, attract and keep all businesses, not just the ones that um, people have certain interests in. Thank you. Yes. Mary Kalensic, um, I don't live in Brooklyn right now, but I own a small Brooklyn-based landscaping business and also a Brooklyn part-time letter carrier. Um, I'm just here to, to stand up for the Nemeths. And uh, again, I've asked you many times, please resolve this. Uh, they are on the brink of bankruptcy, um, which will affect their families. Uh, we're on the brink of losing two incredible businesses. And they also employ, I think they said about 40 people throughout the year. And they have always paid a wonderful wage. They paid fifteen dollars an hour before it was even required by law. So <laughs> settled it. Just settled it. The entire lawsuit was based on a lie, and this has gone on for years now. Please settle this, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Anybody else online? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Hi. My name is Amy Turner. I live on Allen Hill. Um, been a resident here for 23 years. My parents have been in business in this town for over 25 years. Um, they are grabbing properties. They own the, the um, chair reflections and monogrammed building. That is also a part of this lawsuit. Doesn't only affect two businesses, affects multiple and multiple families. I'm begging you to please end this. I have watched my family suffer emotionally and financially for too many years. I'm very protective of my parents and my family. I feel like we have been good Brooklyn residents, along with my children, raised three beautiful children here. My son just bought a house in Brooklyn, and I want it to be a place that we can all be proud of, want to continue to live in, and do business with. My daughter works for the Icebox. She you can see the emotion on her face. She's not only affected by working with this wonderful family that has been so good to her, but also sees her grandparents. And I beg of you, what would you do if this was your family, your grandchildren, your daughter? You know what's right. This whole lawsuit has been wrong. Has the lawsuit been dropped? By the fire department. Yes. So why are we still here? They admitted wrongdoing. What are we going to do from here? Where does it go? 
We're here because we're being sued. Right. I, don't, I don't see how that has anything to do with it. Okay. Wouldn't you want it as resolved as much as we do? I do. I'm just saying, please do us right. Thank you. Anybody else before we go online? Okay. Anybody online want to comment? Right here. Yeah, I'd like to speak. I don't live in town. Is that all right? Please identify yourself. My name's Ryan Graham. I live in Alexandria, Virginia. No. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I grew up in Ledger uh, with Mr. Nemeth. Um, the, the whole Nemeth family is are good people. Um, I, I honestly don't understand why these frivolous suits were brought with taxpayer money. I'm sure the taxpayers did not want their money to go to this type of legal matter. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me when there's a 19 acre parcel right next door that could have been used for a driveway where the fire department could have exited out onto route six by CVS and had control of the traffic light. It would have make it much more safer for the motorists, for the firefighters to be able to take over that traffic signal. The governor is very pro small business and I don't understand why the town of Brooklyn and the East Brooklyn Fire District is contradicting what the state thinks of small business. It doesn't make any sense. And the reason that I think the suit is now coming against the town is because the town allowed this to occur. And I'll tell you what, it's only right for the Nemus to be able to recoup what they've had to spend to save their small business for your town to provide tax money to your town. So that's really all I have to say. I, I, it blows my mind that there's an open 19 acre parcel right next door that they could have used or paid the amount of the assessment, which is $69,000 to those people to create a safer entrance and exit for the fire department instead of using taxpayer money to take them to court. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another page? Same page. Oh, there is two pages. Okay. I don't see anybody else with their hand up. Okay. Last night, anybody in the audience? Question. Uh, Steve Fiedler, 82 Bunny Lane. Um, to kind of piggyback on that comment, um, I had not known how this started. And it sounds like the fire district was an entity that kind of started this suit against you know, the, the uh, ice box. So I, I'm kind of trying to get caught up. I don't know if they had funds to do this legal action or if the town took money out of that, which I don't think is proper. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, no. in yeah, the, is there seats in here? You can come sit or use these as well. And to the same end, I, I work in real estate and I understand easements and right of ways and such and why you know, we weren't doing some type of uh, arbitration or something to mediate this, to, to change the access potentially, um, because we have other businesses as well that are affected. So I, I guess I'm concerned as a taxpayer that our taxpayer dollars were being spent for this, if that's true, or if it was just the fire district that is funding this. And and obviously, the you know, the... Uh, the icebox, uh, they're trying to recoup their money, you know, rightly so. So I, like everybody, hope we can get to a resolution that makes them as close to whole so they can operate that business. I'd just like to say this is public comment, so we're not into a discussion, but my door is always open. If somebody wants to come in and talk to me, I'd be glad to discuss it with them. 
Yes, sir. Uh, Richard Coffey of Brevin Properties, South Main Street. Uh, I just want to help this gentleman out that, in a way, yes, your taxpayers are paying because the fire department, when he originally said that, it was against uh, JN and uh, in Nesmus. Uh, but they also named uh, my property a private property owner, and the Brooklyn Fire Commission was also named in the lawsuit. So what does that mean? That means the town of Brooklyn has to get a lawyer, and who pays the lawyer? Your, your tax. So in a way, if there is, I would assume, I, I can't prove it, and I'm not here to do that, but I would assume uh, that pay his money is, is, is paying for a lawyer. Any other comments? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Chris Maxim, South Main Street. Um, there's been a lot of conversation that I'm curious about. And some of that revolves around a comment that was made to me that part of our mill rate goes into a fund for the East Brooklyn Fire Department, which is separate from the money that they already get from the town. And I heard a lot of conversation tossed around that this was a slush fund that was for the fire department. And of that slush fund, we'll call it that for now, um, $45,000 of that money was spent for renovating a, um, a, a lounge. So my, I guess my question is kind of going hand in hand with what he just said. Is that is it, is there in fact a slush fund? And if there is, is that money being used in this lawsuit against Matt and Chen? So I just, I, I as well, I think everybody can. We're all here for the same thing. We want this resolved. We want this fixed. We want Matt and Chen to get right. They have a business. And my concern is, and this was a conversation that we had had the night of the, the get together down here at Matt's. And what does that say to other businesses that want to come into this area? That now what they're seeing is, hey, we've got a lawsuit going on between the town. Because I know this isn't the only one. There's another gravel business that has a lawsuit pending right now. So what does that say to small businesses? Because you know what? We're a, we're a we're a pretty tight community. We know a lot of each other in this room. And <laughs> collectively, whether you're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, I think we all collectively want this to be a better town for everybody. You know, we've elected you guys to make that happen. It's important to us. It's important. I hope it's important to you too. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, can I, do I have to announce myself again? That's fine. All right. So I guess since there are a lot of people where, that want to have this discussion, when is the proper time to have this discussion? Because this isn't about my mailbox where I might go to town hall and just have that one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody here wants to have this discussion. So when can we have this discussion where everybody who's at this table has an actual discussion? We talked about it rather than going on Facebook and saying what we think, we can't have this conversation now. I mean, we are a group of adults, taxpaying adults, who are at this meeting, invested, and then when we do show up to meetings, we get criticized for going to meetings. We're like, oh, well, you were at the at the very first meeting when we started talking about this back in March about budgets and stuff. Well, you know what? We're here right now. Why can't we have this discussion? I don't understand why we can't have this discussion. You have your people who voted for you to have this conversation, let's have the discussion. I, I'm sure we can find a place in Roger's rules to put this in there. I will answer that question. Um, I talked talk to the attorney and this is under litigation and he advised me not to discuss the issues. And I know that sounds like a cop out. It's a piece of shit. And I agree, but that's what I've been advised to do. Could you make a motion to pay out amongst the? Uh, could it go that's to a sad excuse. To get out of it, often. To uh, whether or not we pay out. Pay out what? I don't know. A million bucks to the ice parks. I don't think you. 
you know, I suppose you could have a petition to have a town meeting and bring that up if you wanted. When is I don't know that there are none. Well, the budget meeting, which could isn't scheduled, which meeting? isn't scheduled either. Could you call a town meeting? I, I could. Hmm? I guess what we're you could just call you can petition. Transparency. Or you can make us go out and get a petition. That's what we want. And I, and I've thought about having an information meeting, but I can't discuss it. So what are we going to learn? Discuss it. Can the attorney discuss it? Who can discuss it? We are the taxpayers. We have a right to know this information. Well, I think the attorneys discuss it amongst themselves. I don't think they want to discuss it to uh, uh, to whoever wants to discuss it. I don't know. I just not. I think there's enough information online <laughs> for people to make a decision. There's a lot of information online. That doesn't mean it's all correct. I, I understand. Matt, you're on. <laughs> I want to address this directly to everybody. Always shed some light on some of this. So, mm -hmm. Jen and I are extremely yes. grateful for the incredible community support. So, like, seriously, thank you so much for everything. You kind of express how amazing your generosity and genuine concern for our well being. And for that, you know, Jen and I are internally grateful. Eternally grateful. I wanted to just share that publicly. Uh, we haven't really yet. However, we are so disappointed that the town government, specifically Austin, have made claims that our attorney and Jen and I have been holding up settlement negotiations by not responding. I would like to point out that we and our attorney have been most transparent and punctual in all of the court filings and communications. The town has filed a new discovery request yesterday. That further delays everything and shows that our negotiations have been made in bad, in bad faith by the town. And that just breaks my heart. I thought we were actually getting somewhere. And then we find out that the attorney sent us another discovery request that put us out 60 days. On top of that, the town hasn't even responded to our discovery request on October 13th, which would put 60 days for them to respond to that. So all of these things just add up. They add up, they add up, they add up. We've been at the table for over a year. We've been here telling everybody we're ready to talk about how to end this. That's a long time where we thought that this was going to end. And you all know that we thought it was going to end last year. Okay. The town, the town has never, ever given us a response to any of our demands or counter suit or anything. Not one acknowledgement that they received it or that there is any counter offer to give. So that's where we are today. We sent discovery requests several weeks ago. They know what we're looking for to end this. And then they send us a discovery request that's going to put the case out another 60 days. If it wasn't for our community and the incredible customers pulling for us and pulling us up by our bootstraps, I don't think we'd even be here tonight. Sorry, but emotional. We're here for you. This, this latest move by the town attorneys highlights the ambivalence and the outright disregard for the impact of this frivolous lawsuit on us, on, on Brevin, Gene, and Rick, pot years, our employees, our employees' families, everybody that has anything to do with this have been, you know, gravely impacted by this. And again, not a single acknowledgement. I just want to make sure that that's really clear. Okay. And it's clear that the town does not want to negotiate in good faith because of that. And I implore this board, the future board, to take action, like as soon as possible. Okay. I do not want to, I, I want to reiterate too, there's nothing wrong from the people in this town that's just like, what keeps us going? And I, I don't think that we could do it without any discussion. Possibly we could. I mean, this weekend, the last few weeks have just been incredible. And I, I just want to make sure everybody knows that we love all of you and we just want to finish this half. <clears throat> I don't want anybody to stonewall us any further. You can talk to us, you don't have to listen to your attorney. I do all the time, but you don't have to. Okay, it's advice. It's not 
somebody like holding you hostage and saying, this is what you have to do. Okay. However, you have an opportunity as a board to go to those attorneys and go to the carrier and to figure something out. I'm an entrepreneur. The definition of being an entrepreneur is problems. You identify a problem, and then you use scientific method to figure it out. And if you fail the first time, you try it again. That's all I've been doing here as an entrepreneur. Why can't you guys take a little bit of what I've been talking to you about for the last three years and listen to us instead of just stonewalling us at every corner? We've never been here to criticize or to, to create a bad environment. We just want to sell some free and ice cream for Christ's sake. <laughs> so please, let us do that, okay? Thank you, Matt. Out of respect, I didn't cut you off in two minutes. Thank you. Yes, we did. We have one more here, I think, first. First of all, I'm Jim Cothier, and I own the hairdressers on the other side of the road. Now, I was told the lawsuit was dropped. Is that true or not? That's all I understand that the fire people dropped the lawsuit, yes. So, Answer me so I can understand, okay? Is that a yes? Yes. Is it about both sides of the road or just one side of it? I assume the lawsuit was about the the uh, right of way, so it's the whole thing. There again, I'm not so I, I'm not a lawyer, being, but I'm telling you what I think. We keep being told we have nothing to do with this lawsuit. It has nothing to do with it. Then why do I have a lawsuit in my house saying that you're still in us. He's broken by the talking about here. Anybody answer those questions? And last but not least, Mr. Vocchio, <laughs> you're stating that they wouldn't take the offer. What is the offer? Could you let us know that much? Sure, I know what you're talking about, John. Do you keep telling us, do you keep telling the town on Facebook? And in your own words, that the ice box are uh, James Bay will not take the offer. What was the offer? I've never heard an offer. Well, maybe you should read Facebook about what's going to place down there. Because people now think the reason it won't end is because JMJ won't take an offer. I've never been offered. I have never even been approached. Three and a half years of my life. Never even approached. Thank you. I am a little done with the town of Brooklyn's um, upper management. Because <laughs> just little things could have been so different if it would have just been with a little bit of respect. I shouldn't be, after 21 years in that spot before the fire department, feeling like this today. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, you said earlier to someone that you were, we're here because you're being sued. Um, no, they, the asked, town, they asked why it was still going on. Right, the town is being sued because the previous administration and the staff of the town was incompetent. They, um, or nefarious, <clears throat> because they had a building permit and then it got revoked right in the middle of their bill. That's just one of the provable instances where they they were wrong. <clears throat> and um, I think as a town entity, they are owed that money because of the brand damage uh, and all the other mudslinging that's been going on. I yield the floor back, I guess. Not back. Sandy? I got a note from somebody saying that we need to ask everybody to mute because the people who are online, not all of them are muted and the people who are online can't hear. Would everybody online please mute themselves unless they're speaking, please? Oh, no. So, Austin, I just have one question. So, <clears throat> before we go to the next online post, 
we see uh, comments in the chat. Did those get retained by reporting? I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose those. I don't know. I don't know either. Sandy, in your meetings, have you ever gotten some chat comments? Uh, comments new? The only time we ever got them is you can't hear you. Oh, well, not so. Um, a lot of them are running. Yeah. No way. Like, see yeah. here. I mean, I mean, I could read them if you want. So they're on the record. Mike Snyder. I also want to put on the record my grave concern for the way this town is handling the situation with the icebox and pseudo. Frankly, it's mind blowing that this is still going on years after the initial lawsuit was filed. It's the obligation of the Board of Selectmen to resolve this situation immediately rather than continuing to purposely and strategically drag this out with the intent to bleed the Nima family. You know? Yep. Brian Simmons, did they say how much the icebox is looking for with this lawsuit? Obviously, that's confidential information. Mike Snyder again. I believe that is still privileged information. Okay. Information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, who's RG? Whoever that is. If you're Mike, oh, look here. I thought you said to Mike. Off. Yeah, don't curse. <laughs> Stephen Rock. Stephanie. Stephanie, excuse me. Rocky Hines. I wasn't aware until recently the other businesses were also involved. Perhaps the East Brooklyn Fire Department should not be located where it is, or do Oops. as the other come. Some in our state about using the 19 acre parcel, parcel or alternate entrance for exit routes. Our G says can't discuss it, but your tax dollars are paying for it. Brian Simmons says, How much will this cost me on my taxes? Mike Snyder again says the town is clearly dragging their feet on purpose to sink the Neiman's family. They should be ashamed. <laughs> RG says again, why would they want to sink a small business in their small town? I don't get it. Mike Snyder says the attorney works for the board of selection of the town, not the other way around. Blaming the attorney is such poor leadership. And his picture. Melissa Moon, Austin. Oh, this is totally not related. Okay, that's not. We don't want to really <laughs> the tax. Yeah, that's an unrelated thing. Okay. I just want answers. Mike Snyder says, "I think it's it's worth pointing out that this goes to trial. The no. doesn't enter good faith negotiations. It's going to." Cost the town a lot more money. It's a disservice to the taxpayers in this community if it goes to trial. And uh, I won't bother reading that one. They're all the same. Sarah uh. Phelps says, as a previous employee of the Icebox, I beg you to please make this family whole again. Their business, our foundation of our Brooklyn community. Can I yep. Can't yeah. This. If your Zoom is set up to record to do a, a transcript, if the setting for tra create a transcript of your meeting is set, you'll get that as part of the meeting. Guess we don't know if it is. <laughs> well, she can check. She can get a transcript. Well, we if you're reading some, you have to read all. So. <laughs> well, I skipped some, I skipped some personal attacks, same as I would if the comments were there. But I would ask people not to use the chat because it's not necessarily productive. It's making things more. Right. We have a lot more. 
No, that's it. Okay. RG says, I'd love to hear the governor's thoughts on the town of Wyndham County basically destroying a small business. He loves small business. And Kim says, speaks volumes about you again. Yeah, I think that does it, chats. I don't think we'll read any more chats. Um, if we have any more comments, we'll be glad to take them. I think we have another one online. We have, we want to do Kim. Kim, I believe you just had a chat, so. Yep. Kim, you're so, on if you want to speak. Uh, my mic is on. So what he doesn't want to read is my comment that clearly states at the beginning of the meeting, he said his door was open to discuss all this. And then five minutes ago, he said he can't discuss it at all. My question is, which is the truth? You can discuss it or not. It wasn't a personal attack, Austin. It was a question that made absolute sense based on your statements that we all just heard. You just don't want to answer it because it shows yet again that we can't rely on anything you say. You told that gentleman standing up that your door is always open for people to come and discuss this. So which is it? Your door is open to discuss it or you're not allowed to? Uh, because I would like to know as a town taxpayer also. To discuss it, we can't discuss the negotiations or the confidential things. Okay, so why would you say in the beginning your door was open to discuss? Because it is. It's okay. Obviously, it's not. Gary, you you're discuss. on. Gary. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to, uh, Carrie, you has 38 Day Street. I want to read a letter into the public record. It is dated December 30th, 2021 to William Wheaton Sr., Senior, the district president for the Brooklyn Fire District. Dear Mr. Wheaton, many thanks to you and Pat for coming to talk to me. It's good to meet the people who are responsible for the operations in our town. As I discussed uh, with you, I have always been unclear of how the fire district is functioning and its relationship with the East Brooklyn Fire Company. I feel that I at least have a basic understanding now. On another note, we discussed the status of the fire lane. I am disheartened that the former first selectman, Rick Ives, uh, conveyed to you that we had no stake in this and advised you it was a civil matter. We have a clear policy in, in our town ordinances addressing this issue. A copy is enclosed. The town uh, ordinance could and will be willing to do now enforce this ordinance to the fullest extent. I hope this is helpful and I would be willing to have further discussions if needed. Finally, on a drive-by, I noticed there are already no parking fire lane signs on Route 6 side of South Main Street. I will also check on the regulations to allow a sign for the fire company, not just a picture of a sign as presently there. If I can be any further assistance, let me know. All my best, Austin Tanner for selectmen. Um, this letter really um, clearly uh, says that Rick Ives, the former first selectman, um, advised that the Brooklyn uh, East Brooklyn Fire District uh, use this as a civil matter and that means a lawsuit versus um, anything that's enforceable by the town by an ordinance. This letter was shared publicly by Nick Provost um, on Facebook and I know I get a bad rap for sharing things on social media and on Facebook but there are some things that are undeniable so you guys can tell me that it's not true that it's not um, a fact but your videos your own words um, are irrefutable. And um, I know I've been questioned about the IRS, um, the questions about the IRS informational tax filings that have been filed by the East Brooklyn Fire Department and the validity of my statements. But those are, in, um, you know, independently verifiable facts um, that if a, a very, very simple conversation with a CPA could easily answer for you. Um, though, again, I will state, as I have stated before, I don't think you actually need to be a CPA um, to just read the very simple instructions um, and guidelines on the IRS website. With all of that said, this town has done a disservice to the Nemeth family, and we do owe them um, a settlement to make them whole because this was a meritless lawsuit. That's why it was dropped. Um, and we need to move forward and do the right thing by this family so that we can make sure that this is a community that we all want to be a part of, a community that welcomes business, that welcomes families, and listens to its constituents. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Okay. You want Melissa? Melissa, this is about the, the JMN suit, right? Melissa, you're on. Yeah, what did you say? 
This is about the JM. Well, you can public comment. You can comment whatever you want. Go exactly. ahead. Exactly. So I just want to know why you, as as the selectman now reelected, which definitely not by my choice, why you're blowing me off on my issues as a town of Brooklyn resident? Is it because I live on South Main Street? Is it because I'm not in your fancy club? I'm just trying to figure it out because it's been so long now, and I'm not really sure what's going on. Thank you. Again. Oh, but we don't want to. We have more to go. We should just have to take her hand down. We could check. Laurie, check with her. Kim, do you have another comment or is your hand still up? Okay. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? You're back. My name is Kathy Williamson. Um, Mr. Kenner, you and I met the other day. I have three, maybe three, three points. Are you not going to ask me like on the go? <laughs> I hope that doesn't pass my <laughs> You as a board of selectmen are newly elected. You are about to write your legacy. You can continue yeah. with the apathy bordering on illegal things that you have done in the past and that's all been proven, or you can step up be men and start the healing of this town. Be leaders, come to the table, figure it out as Matt has asked. You are the leaders of this bill of this town. You tell the lawyers what to do. You tell the insurance company what to do. It's time to stop that the lawyers are telling us as the lawyers are telling us that. You need to make this family whole. And it really is your legacy, Mr. Tanner. What do you want it to be? What do you want people to remember you for? Being apathetic? Or being a leader. So please stand up and be a leader and finish it. Thank you. Back in the corner. Jessica Solis, 22 years away. Mine was to piggyback on that. That's exactly where I was going with it. This is all about your legacy. The Nemas have made their legacy. Whether the icebox stays open or closes, they are the belief that everyone has been to the end of the school year, after games. Their legacy is made. They will not be forgotten. Do you guys want to go down in history? as the people that were supposed to represent the taxpayers, you have all these taxpayers here telling you what they need. We voted you in. Represent the people. That's why you're here. End this. Make them whole. That's all we're asking. Do the right thing. Then that can be your legacy. Then you can be remembered as the people who made it right. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't see anybody else. There'll be a second public yeah, comment. Yeah, there'll be a second public comment at the end of the meeting if you want to comment anymore. So we'll close the public comment. Next item four is new business to fire lane. Um, just a little review for the people who don't know that the state passed a uh, statute years ago that towns could make their own ordinance to form a, one form a fire lane. So and this is, I know. and uh, you're problem. out of order. Public comment's over. You got to wait. The state passed an ordinance, a uh, statute a long time ago. Could, towns could form a fire ordinance. The town of Brooklyn never did it. And so we're trying to form a fire lane ordinance now. And... This was brought up last meeting, but the copy didn't get sent to the selectmen, so it wasn't discussed. So our job tonight, we have this in front of us, and uh, we're going to discuss it. So you guys have seen it. you have any comments? Well, I've made a first pass over it. I mean, there's some elements here that sound good and other elements that don't sound so, so good. I think I'd like to... Read it in depth because I got it for the first time today. Okay. I'd like to review it and have some debate on the future. Okay. I'll make a motion we table it to the next meeting. Second. Any discussion? 
I just say you have a copy now, so that's me. We'll be ready to discuss it. The all in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passed the table. B, it's a beta group. Um, we discussed this a few times. This is a group we hired to uh, do a survey of our roads and how we're going to handle them and what roads need priority fixing and stuff. Uh, we met with them last week. We we're going to do it earlier, but we we're waiting to hear on a grant, seek grant for Church Street, because if we had money for that, we wouldn't have to include that money in his survey. So he took that down, and um, we're going to, He's supposed to come up with a plan with the money we have, what roads we should be doing, which ones need to work. And uh, we're going to be sitting down with he and Tommy and I, and we're going to have a plan for next spring, what roads we'd be doing. I don't know if you have any comments or thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. I'm anxious to see the final report. We have a report of the roads and what condition they're in, but we don't have his recommendations of which ones we should be spending our money on at this time. When do you think the recommendations are coming out? I would think the next month, but at this oh, stage, yeah. this well, stage, it's not urgent because nothing's going to happen till spring. Right. Except it'd be nice to have for the budget process and everything. That's important. Yeah. Probably have spent some time going out and seeing what they've seen. Okay. Number five, old business, JMN fire district lawsuit. I know we have a lot of upset people here, and I know, including myself, I'm upset that I really don't feel free to discuss things that are on the litigation. But I wrote a little statement tonight that I'm going to read. It says, I have listened to the concerns of our citizens and acknowledged the urgency of our situation with the JMN Enterprise. I had conversations with both our attorneys and our insurance company and expressed our hopes that we could get all parties together and discuss a settlement. They've assured me that it would be possible, not until they have had time to assess the recent demand they had received on November 1st. I realize this won't make a lot of supporters happy, but we must realize that we also have the responsibility to assure that the town and its actions are duly address all aspects of the suit and the citizens. I'll just read that. I don't know if you guys want to make any more comments that we're allowed okay. to make public. I've got a question based on that comment. So okay. They reached out to you. I reached out to them. Okay. We spoke with them. Spoke to both of them today. Today. Well, then I'll probably make a motion that we have the executive session at the tail end of August. Mom, what's the D O L L Y now? Dolly. Okay, there's a motion going executive session discussing the litigation on the lawsuit. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Any discussion? Clarify that that executive session will be at the end of the day. That way they will not have to have it. Mr. Bothill, could you speak up some? I can't hear you back here. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Coming off a of pickup, so I, if they trigger again, not perfect. <laughs> um, what I was recommending is that the executive session be at the end so that you all don't leave the room, allow us to discuss it, and then come back, and then there's not really anything we can add to it. I just have a question. Um, so Austin said that he talked to both the town and the insurance attorneys. I just couldn't hear what he said. Like okay. they're prompted the. I just said I spoke to both of them today. Both, both yes. of them. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Couldn't yeah. Right. All those going in favor, of going executive session, say aye. At the end aye. of the meeting. At the end of the meeting. Yes. Aye. So moved. Number six is review sure. this. Oh, oh yeah, we could have more discussion stuff. Yeah, so it's awkward. We can't go back and forth, but you know, one of the reasons why I just got referred to the insurance company is that so many things in town happen where we get named in a lawsuit for you name it, car accident. Someone wants to sue the town and us individually because. The guardrails weren't there, or the guardrails were there, and they would have been better off without. So, 
a, a lot of stuff happens uh, like that, and we generally just refer it to the um, the insurance company. And frankly, we don't get updates. We I still have the lawsuit with my name on it that from three years ago where some kids were killed. I don't know if it's been settled or not. So uh, it, it's it's very frustrating when we turn things over. But again, the reason why we we have the insurance is for really sad and, and frivolous stuff like that, but also for instances like this where uh, town employees or or leadership, you know, may have made a mistake, and you know the insurance company covers us under errors and omissions insurance, or you know, liabilities for the poor decision making or things that have happened that may have been from negligence so it's a protection to all of us because we shouldn't have to pay for mistakes and i think the initial inclination was to allow this to take its course you know through the insurance company to protect everybody so that we're not paying for any mistakes if mistakes were identified and and agreed to, you know, to be true. But in this particular case, and I think we can all agree, the timing isn't lining up with the other folks that are being affected. So the other option is, yes, we we do have an arrangement with the insurance company. The lawyers work for the insurance company. So we're going to reach out to the insurance company and say, you want to withdraw our claim, okay? Now we're back to, you know, to Matt's position. Then we would end up having a town hearing to discuss it, to find, you know, try to figure out what's appropriate. That's going to be a very discussion. And then the town meeting to vote on. And that means we're funding it all on our own. So it's, it's coming out of reserves, tax revenue, whatever it is, so if there is some agreement that the town's culpable for you know, some decisions or, or things that have happened, we're paying for it, okay? as opposed to the insurance company paying for it. The problem here is we, no one seems to feel as though we've got the luxury of time for it to all, to all settle out. So if we're gonna be prepared to pay for it, then we can consider you know, going that route with the insurance company and just withdrawing the claim. Um, I don't know how practical that is, but it's an option. And it's one that we've struggled with for a while, and, and you all are asking us to, to consider and consider, you know, in, uh, in great haste. And I understand that, you know. Joe, the NEMAs have a shut-off notice. Their electricity. I understand this. There's an urgency here. I understand we understand that. And this is this isn't an open discussion right now. But the problem is, even if we were to decide that we wanted to move, it has a route to take. It goes through the board of finance. It goes through the selectmen. It goes through, you know, a public notice period. And probably a town hearing. And then it's not a quick process to. You know, to just write your check. So whatever we do, it's not going to happen. And speaking of taxpayers, we do have responsibility taxpayers in town. And you know, if you talk a million dollars, you're talking a couple mills. If you're all willing to pay two more mills in your taxes, that's something to consider too. But we do have responsibility as a board client, as a person here to to allow us to spend some money. I don't have the power to just say I'm going to pay write a check tomorrow. And I think that's part of what he's saying that even if we do it ourselves without the insurance, it's still a process to go through. It's going to take some time. I don't have anything else to that. Public, public comments coming up. Public comments coming up. You're out of order. Lou, you got any comments? Okay. Any more on that, Joe? Number six, review single family dwelling report. That's in your packet. Any comments on that? Number seven, seven discussion of financials. And for them with them, do you have any questions on them? 
Nope. And the only any assessed wages part time. Was that because the position was moved from full time to part time? Yeah, that's why it's way over by. Why is the fire marshal overtime way over budget today? That's another question I had. I sent some calls. I did write down. I'm going to start writing down when it's overtime, and I'm going to call UV and see if he's, when he's, if he's required to those things. When it's called out for an emergency, which is overtime, that's on a separate budget item, so it's right. not part of the, his overtime. I don't know what, I'm just looking for clarification on why he's overtime. already over budget on overtime or only partway through the year. Yeah, we're going to check that out and see if he, when he's called out, if it's done on overtime or emergency. That might be the problem. It's not coded. I don't know. I'll write that down and check this. And then Rock Silver Road building repairs. Why that's, I don't know why on building repairs they have an encumbrance of $4,000. But I don't know what that. I don't know that one either. Right. You could look into it. Will do. Mm. How about John Rock calling up the Vayner housing code issue? He might be getting paid. Mute themselves again, Austin. Please mute all. If you're online, would you please mute yourself? It's Melissa every time. Melissa Moon. I can hear you. Yes, it's Melissa Moon. I'm on mute now. Please mute yourself. There's, there should be one button that can mute everybody. I think down in the so you done? No. You got more? Family fun day. Why are we, did we get charged for the family fun days this direct department had this year or this fall? Uh, they came out of our budget. Quite that's probably the donuts and stuff, I would assume, for Memorial Day. No, that would have been last year. Different. Where, where is it on here? How much is it? Um, special programs. The 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 green the the green probably the balance of the cost. It's the cost more than what that budget. Family Fund Day? We didn't have it this year. Well, it's, well, the one down, yeah, we did have family fun day in July or whatever down the park. That came out of the park. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. What's the only question I have? Okay, we're down on financials. Okay, number eight, through the bills. Last time. <laughs> Voucher batch number 1263, dated 11 9 2023, the amount of $14,196. That was all capital improvements. One second. Any discussion on that? Yes. The gate, is that the initial payment for? For the gate work down there, or is that the entire? That should be the entire. I think, I think it's the entire. Payment. Payment. Fourteen thousand was the entire bill. I believe so. They did go over a little, but they covered it with the yard expenses. Okay. They did some of the trenching and stuff. The highway department did it with the wires out there. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 So moved. I move. <clears throat> Voucher 1264, dated 11 9 2023, 
the amount of $61,172.36. That was the monthly bill. I'll second. Mr. Gotchin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. So moved. <laughs> Move voucher 1265, dated 11 9 the amount of $292.91. That was the fun field bill. Okay. Any discussion? In favor say aye. Any opposed? So moved. Voucher 1267, dated 11 9 2023. In the amount of eighty-two dollars and sixty-six cents, and that is employee travel. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. So moved. That is another one. Came in. Came in later. Voucher twelve seventy-two for sixteen hundred forty-five dollars and eighty-three cents. That was mainly spooky nights expenses. Second. Any discussion? No. When was that bill dated? Same thing, 11-9. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. So moved. Other business? Yeah. Austin, the other thing that I'm going to, uh, to add probably to a future agenda uh, has to do with the Housing Authority. The Housing Authority has received some recent correspondence from Habitat for Humanity uh, looking for suitable sites uh, to purchase uh, or acquire uh, either land or homes in need of renovation uh, to, uh, to house uh, homeowners that are looking to employ some sweat equity to, to help build their own home. Uh, as we all know, Housing Authority doesn't really have any resources, uh, but I'd like I'd like us to consider uh, small cities an application to try to try to get some resources to allow the Housing Authority to you know, acquire some vacant sites um, if available, I'd also like uh, the town, if there's funding, uh, to provide the housing authority with the right of first refusal to take ownership of those properties before we make them available for, you know, surplus sale or. <coughs> Where did this communication come from? Did they contact the housing authority or? To the housing authority. A couple of weeks. It was sent to you and forwarded to us. Okay. <laughs> All right. From the housing authority. Any other, other business? I'd just like to point out that Saturday at one o'clock, our veteran ceremony at the monuments. It would be nice if some people came out to support our veterans. And also on Saturday is the hazardous waste day with Putnam and Woodstock. You have to take your stuff to Woodstock Town Hall, but at least we have an avenue to get rid of some hazardous waste. Anything else? Not for me. Okay, number 10, public comment. I appreciate that. Don't abuse your time. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to understand a little bit more about insurance and how it works with Perma, but I do want to point out something that's extremely important here and educate everybody um, that I'm repeating the appearance in the court case for how to move work for everybody. That's the insurance company's attorney that is in charge of working on some sort of settlement with us. And the date that they appeared in the court case was November 16th, 2021. So uh, to I me, 
that says that they've stood idly by while all everything happened instead of preparing. So it's incumbent on the Board of Selectmen to hold them accountable for two years going by without them having one correspondence with anybody. So that that's that's what you guys gotta do here. Okay, it's time for action. I understand that there's some process that needs to happen, but the process should have started November 16th, 2021. It's 2023 now. I can't even believe that. I didn't even think I was gonna make it to 2023. But this is really important to understand that this insurance company, the defendant in this case, sat by and didn't file a single piece of paperwork in our case, except for a bunch of things. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Anybody yes. else? Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, I was out of order earlier. Apologies, <laughs> <laughs> etc. So, I would hope that that as you are fighting for the folks in this town, that you are making your phone calls tomorrow morning to this insurance company. And if you don't get anywhere with them, then you're going to step two, which is meeting with Matt and Jen about what we can do to solve this. And it has to happen. You're going to bleed these people dry. And what's What's scary is that it could happen to any one of us. That big corporations can drag this on and we hang on as long as we can until we have nothing. What would you do if someone came after your farm? or your house, or your properties. You need to fight. You need to make those phone calls like you're protecting your own family because Brooklyn is your family. You're serving us for two years. We've heard a lot about legacy here. It's beyond that. It's gonna say a lot to the, us moving forward as a town that you, regardless of what you were involved in before or what your actions were before, how are you going to make this right? Get on the phone, you figure it out with the insurance company. I, I appreciate you, you, honest to God, I appreciate you saying all the steps, you know, all these steps. I, I, yeah, right. I don't know that. I don't know that you're involved in a bunch of lawsuits. I don't know the ins and outs. And maybe someday I will, but I don't right now. So I appreciate that. But this is going on too, too long. I mean, you get a lot of people out to this meeting, a lot of families involved. That's your job. Your job has to get on the phone, take care of this, and then if that doesn't work, don't accept no for an answer, right? If they said, you know, fine, then go to Matt and Jen. What are we going to do next? Then bring it in front of the town. Get Do something, though. Do something. It's terrifying. It is so terrifying to think that that this could happen to any one of us. Any one of us. That's that's terrifying. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I'd like to piggyback on what Joe was saying about if we took the, the claim away from the insurance and started to deal with it. Um, if we don't deal with it and they do go under, what does it say for years to come? Um, you know, you're saying that it'll increase our taxes to pay them a certain amount. Um, and I get that. Uh, I believe we have it in the coffers to pay it out if we had to. Um, but also, the you got to think about, we have to weigh what could happen if we let them go out of business. Years and years of Brooklyn's reputation losing families, right. residents, future business holders, business, future entrepreneurs, trying to uh, make, I mean, I'm a realtor and I get people, young families all the time saying, I wanna live in Brooklyn, Concord, or Woodstock. Those are the three towns in this, in this county that families wanna be at. And I'm just dreading any minute now, someone's gonna come through the door and just say, I only want, 
conquer Woodstock because I have a small business and I, I, I can't trust that I'd be safe in Brooklyn with my small business. Um, and I, I just think we really have to, to think about that. And I think paying out, yeah, everybody laughed when I said a million dollars, but I think that's pennies compared to the job creation and the business creation, the small business community that we could have here in Brooklyn. Um, I, I just think about like the real premier towns like Putnam, and Mystic, those are towns where you get so much traffic to the small businesses just like uh, Pseudo and Icebox. And um, I, I just think as a town and uh, as selectmen, as leaders, yeah, we, we got to say the, whether it was the administration before or the staff before, we have to hold those people accountable. If, it, if need be, we need to fire them. I know you and I had that discussion on the phone the other day um, that, you know, two years ago, you, you kind of regretted not cleaning up people that were either um, negligent or not doing their job or just incompetent overall. Um, and I, I just think moving forward, we need to, to make them pull whatever way we can. The insurance isn't going to do it, then yeah, I, I really think we should bite the bullet and do it because I think long term we lose a lot more than just a million dollars. Um, and and uh, I, I guess that's that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say something in, in your favor. Uh, I came to work up in this area in 1980 and moved up here in 1983, and at the time. Uh, you say Putnam and people were shut. You know, it was like it was like a hole. Well, they turned that around. <laughs> Putnam is the biggest thriving town that we have in the quiet corner. It's and why? Small business. You know, they, they just and they work together. And Brooklyn can have the same thing, but we, we've got to get through this quickly. Thank you. You on the back. I'm going to stand up for them a little. <laughs> uh, Gary Barnes, Bethlehem Road. Um, so I actually want to piggyback on both these people. I have a unique perspective. I actually grew up in Newport. You're probably looking at me like, why the hell did I move to Brooklyn, Connecticut? <laughs> um, because I watched the town that I love lose its soul. It forgot about its residents. We lost all our small businesses. We went just right to Florida. With them. Everybody left, nobody could afford it. The thing about Newport is they have beaches, they have the mansions. We don't have anything. The only thing that we do have is our small business. And the past two weeks of working with Jen and Matt, I felt like I was home. They are amazing people, and losing a small business, especially ones like theirs with pseudo, with great food, you can't really find that unless you go to Putnam, by the way. It's it's amazing, especially being a Rhode Island transplant where you can't find it. So let's keep the food up here. This is amazing. That's my big, unique one, I guess. Thank you. It's Kathy Williams again. I have um, a couple of comments. First, the people up here. I'm not sure that everybody understands what really is going on. And I, I wanna wanna make it clear. Jen and Matt are willing to come to the table and do an out of court settlement. All they want is to settle and move on. If this doesn't get settled and it goes to court, there's going to be a lot of discovery about this town that people are not going to want to see. And it's going to be much worse than what they're looking for. So just for those of you that are here, know that that next step is to go to court. My second question is, where is the town's attorney in this? Where is Sussman and Shapiro, Eric Callaghan? We've not mentioned, heard his name mentioned at all. Isn't he supposed to be representing the town if the other lawyer is representing the insurance company? One so why are we not hearing anything that your lawyer is giving you the proper? Because <laughs> if your lawyer was involved, they might be telling you that a different story than the lawyer for the insurance company who doesn't want to pay out. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? John? I don't mean to. <laughs> want to, but I um, So I just want to start with... Um, I guess I'll thank you. I want to start with showing a picture of our family from April of 2020. Lincoln was still in pull-ups. 
we are down at the fire station with our friends at the fire department. And it was COVID and we were having one of those drive through birthday parties and we all had our stupid hats and we found our horns. And this was my, one of my last good days at 17th John H Street. And to this day, I cannot figure out what happened between this photo. And I don't know what caused some of those members then and the town officials that we were friends with, friends, I'm telling you, we were friends to turn against us and our business. I lay awake at night and think, what travesty could I have done to cause these people who I've known for decades to flip the switch and make my life a big test? Every night I go through my phone and I look at texts, photos, videos, I have everything, emails saying, what did I say wrong? What did I do wrong? What did I do to make this happen to us? And and I said over and over again, this is this is a, the ripple effect of the actions, whatever they were and whatever caused this to happen, will stretch far and wide and forever alter the legacy of the town of Brooklyn if this if immediate action is not taken. And everyone's saying settlement, 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 but as much as we want to be made whole, I know that we need. Everyone who shares that right of way, we need assurances that going forward, this won't happen again. That is in our, our ask, and that is and should be at the forefront of everybody in town's thoughts because it's that is very important. So every day I'm going overtime on this thing sometimes. <laughs> One of my strongest emotions of all of them is failure and it just crushes me. I every day I feel like I felt the ventures and the entire I suck legacy. I felt failed this town and the school and the sports teams that the ice box has sponsored for 40 years. I feel like I felt that failed that who was happy as a clam down in his neck. <laughs> and I told him that Brooklyn was a good place and that they would take us in and and we could raise our family and grow a business. So what I want to know is, now that you know how I feel every day, how do you feel? Do you feel anything like this, anywhere close to mine, my feelings? And so again, everybody knows if we're closing and this actually happens, the problem's not gone. It's, it's just going to, we have to do something, not just for us, but for the future. And I added this part because I just want to say to Rick and Jean and Emma and the Turner and Pop Sayer family who are here today. You're the only ones that have been through this with us and you know everything. To our attorney Carrie, who's on Zoom very quietly listening. She's put up with us for all of these years and she still believes in us and wants to help us. And and to have her integrity questioned here over and over again, not just tonight, but by the town saying that any of it goes on her and behalf of all, and on behalf of all the innocent people caught in this whirlwind. We've been fighting the tides to fix it, and I apologize to every citizen of Brooklyn that will if our is a feeling the effects of this tragedy now and will continue for the foreseeable future. Anybody else? One question. <clears throat> okay. So if my if my D says that I have the right of way to a road, how does somebody make a fire lane without fire? <clears throat> That's what going. Okay. Thank you. Some online. Yeah, we have Carrie. Got another one out here, sir? Carrie. Carrie? Online. Carrie. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Yep. Carrie. Hi again. Um, I I do want to, in light of all of this um conversation around the subject, want to point out that this is not the only lawsuit in town. Um, and there seems to be a lot more willingness to settle with some of the other lawsuits. 
um, versus this one. Um, and I would just encourage you all to swallow your pride, eat a slice or a whole humble pie and do the right thing by this family. Our children are watching. Okay. Our children are watching. They see this, like Jen said, her, her children were babies when this started in diapers, when this started and, um, they are witnessing all of this and their peers are witnessing all of this. And my children are witnessing, witnessing all of this. Um, and all of this really could have been avoided. So please, please do the right thing. Thank you. No, RG. RG. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to circle back, um, you know, perhaps I've moved to the big city outside of, of Connecticut, but I really can't believe that you're doing this to your own people. Jen grew up in town. Her great grandfather was the first selectman. You know, they have a connection to this town. They have a connection to this business. Ma'am in the front seat, that's the hairstylist. If they were suing you for hundreds of thousands of dollars, would you stay in town? Would you keep your business in town? Right. Probably, probably not, correct? Mr. Realtor with the baseball cap. Mr. Real, Mr. Realtor with the baseball cap in the front row. If they were if your business was physically located in Brooklyn and they were suing you for hundreds of, of thousands of dollars, would you keep your business in Brooklyn? I, I think well, do you have a comment, please address in the chair. Well, I'm just it. saying, I'm, I'm, I'm conversating with the rest of the public in the room, just like I would do I if understand. I was the person. I would not have been able to hold on as long as the Nemus. Yeah. Right, that. and that is my point, is they are, are connected to the town. They easily could have picked up and gone to Pomfret or Putnam or something like that but they are con she, she grew up in town i honestly can't believe that you're doing this to your own people and for the fire district matt was a volunteer firefighter for years how could you do this to one of your brothers it's disgusting to me i, I just i don't get how you can do this to your own people what is it gonna take there are 37 people online and that room there is probably as full as it's ever going to be in years. Make it right. Thank you. You want to? No. We have a person in the back. Okay, Linda. Uh, could you explain to me, with uh, your attorney for Kerma, representing the insurance company, and the town attorney, who has jurisdiction as to who's going to say what happens? The insurance company? They have jurisdictions over different parts. Kerma handles the money. Okay, so they're going to be the ultimate person that's that or the entity that says, yes, we will settle or no, we will not settle. Probably. So they're going to roll the dice, is what they've been doing, appears to be, that they've rolled the dice because what they're going to do is going to keep asking these people through their attorney for more discovery and more documents and more nonsense to stretch this out because that's what insurance companies do. They play the odds, that's what they do. So we're gonna sit by or the town's gonna sit by and watch this continue to occur until they can no longer hold out. Is that really where we're at? I mean, we know what the insurance company's gonna do. They've already done it. They filed for more discovery, right? And they've been into this for two years now. Believe me, I would love to answer you, but I'm not going to. Like the town attorney, and you with the town attorney, or you as a, a body with the town attorney, does not say to the insurance company, we have come to the end of the road here. We need to make some kind of decision about what's going to happen because we all know lawyers are in it, or the majority of lawyers are in it to make money. Um, so the longer they stretch this thing out, the more money they make. So who, who puts an end to it? Thank you for your comments. I think we have one over here first. Do you have your hand up? 
Just brushing her hair, I guess. Go ahead. If I could add, the, uh, the attorneys are giving you advice. That doesn't mean you have to follow. You don't have to necessarily keep quiet about it. I know it technically would could open you up to more litigation, um, but it is just advice that we are paying through the nose for as a town. Okay. So yeah. you you have the ability to set a town meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. So set set a town meeting. Right. Oh, Kyle Morrissey, uh, Providence Road. Um, set a town meeting. Let all of us decide if we want to pursue it via the insurance and just settle with them from the town's offers or Millbury. That's going to be quicker. But let every, if we draw this out in insurance and we could have everybody agreed to settle it a different way, it can be done a lot quicker. Just set a town meeting. What's the worst that can happen? The whole town shows up and, and sticks up for themselves? Set it tonight. Set a, set a date tonight. You have the ability to do us. You say you want it to end. Set a date tonight. Okay. We'll take that under advisement. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Matt. Matt. There's a, one more thing I just want to add. Jen didn't bring it up, but I will. My son Arlo was at art class and they were painting a mural on the wall at school. And he's nine. And he asked the art teacher if he could paint the icebox logo on the wall because it'll stay there forever. Even though we might not. Thank you. Anybody else last comments? Okay, we thank you all for coming and giving us comments, and we will be discussing this in executive session. Pretty messed up doing all my comments. What was that? I don't know. It's Melissa. You wanted to talk. Melissa, do you have another comment? Yeah, you can laugh at me and all, but I just think that you should really start helping these people and everyone that's asking for help and stop being that the way that you're being. I don't think you're funny. I don't think it's funny that you think it's funny that I'm talking or that I want to make comments on here, but you've been ignoring all of my emails, messages, and any way of getting a hold of you. So that's the problem here often, okay? Now, I just watched Jen cry, and it made me cry. Help them, help me, help everyone in the town of Brooklyn, please. Okay? That's all I have to say. Just one comment. Did you check your email today? I did, and I responded to you, and you had nothing to say to my response. I guess I apologize, because I didn't see your response yet. I did it right away after you emailed me at 8 a.m., and that's the first email I got from you in almost a year when you turned down what I had to say about my housing code and fire code issue because you're friends with the landlord. But that don't matter who you're friends with. There's still laws, and I still have a family that almost died. So I'd appreciate you getting back to me. Thank you. And I don't appreciate you helping those people because it's almost too late, and I know you don't care, but that's their life. Start helping people's lives in Brooklyn. Please, Austin. You got selected again. Do your job. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. For thank coming. you, everybody, for coming. I just want to thank you for continuing the conversation after we're gone. I appreciate that. Thank you. 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 So, Joe, who would you want to invite to this? Is that your question? The gray out of town. I don't know. Ray should be on it. Ray, you want to be in the executive session? You should be. You're going to be dealing with this. You're going to be dealing with this. Anybody else you think you are? Not? Congratulations. <laughs> you want Sammy, Joe?
Do you want to say it, Dan? Uh, yeah. I don't care. Sure. Don't let it get to me. So, yeah. Don't let it get to Thank you. I appreciate that. I've been in this lesson since day one. I just been quiet because I respect my part of my But I'm not so happy about the leaders of yesterday. But you have to get up in the worst of that. You need to get a letter of truth in What are you talking about? I'm so confused. We made, a, we made a comment. That you, you just got notified recently from the from the lawsuit. I did not think okay, that. Okay, so okay. I, I, I said that. All right. So I went. I wish I would have gotten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll just, I wish I would have. You got to turn us off. Yeah. I wish that. How many of you just pull out and say, go just hit me? Yeah. Well, I figured once we go on exactly, I'll turn the recording but I wanted to wait till we made the motion. Okay. It's been going on this day. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, shutting them off, right? I want to use to make a motion to go in executive and then I'll show Oh, yeah, we should do that. I'll make your motion, yeah. Um, make a motion that we uh, proceed to executive session as approved earlier in the meeting. What's that, Carl? In favor, say aye. 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 